This program is brought to you by Hometown Veterinary Partners. Learn how you can get on the pathway to partnership at hometownvetpartners.com forward slash vet candy. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Deja. I'm a vet with Hometown Veterinary Partners. We're so excited to collaborate with Vet Candy on this project. Want to know more about Hometown Veterinary Partners and how you can get on the path to partnership? Visit hometownvetpartners.com forward slash vet candy. Best of luck on your tests. Here's Dr. Shannon Gregoire for tonight's quiz night. Hey there, I'm Dr. Shannon Gregoire and this is Quiz Time with Vet Candy. Let's get started. Now it's time for question number one. A six-year-old female Labrador retriever presents with lethargy and pale mucous membranes. Blood tests reveal a pack cell volume or PCV of 18%. The decision to perform a blood transfusion is considered. What is the appropriate volume of packed red blood cells, or RBCs, to administer to raise the PCV by 1%? Is it A, 0.5 mL per kg, B, 1 mL per kg, C, 2 mL per kg, D, 3 mL per kg, or E, 4 mL per kg? Take a moment now to think about what answer you'd like to choose and put it in the chat box below. The correct answer is B, one mil per kg. This is the correct dose to raise the PCV by 1%. For each one mil per kg of packed red blood cells administered, the PCV is expected to increase by approximately 1%. A was incorrect at a half ml per kg. This would not be sufficient to raise the PCV by 1%. Answer C at two mils per kg was also incorrect as this would raise the PCV by approximately 2%, more than necessary if the goal is only a 1% increase. Answer D at three mils per kg was also incorrect as this would raise the PCV by about 3%, leading to an overcorrection. And lastly, E at four mils per kg was incorrect as this would raise the PCV by about 4%, which could result in an excessive increase in PCV. Now it's time for question number two. A five-year-old Abyssinian cat is brought in for a blood transfusion. The owner is unaware of the cat's blood type, but it is known that Abyssinians often have type B blood. What type of transfusion reaction is most likely if this cat is inadvertently given type A blood? Is it A, hemolysis, B, anaphylaxis, C, pyrexia, D, hypotension, or E, None, as blood type does not matter in cats. Take a moment now to think about your answer and drop it in the comments below. The correct answer is B, anaphylaxis. Type B cats given type A blood are at a high risk for severe potentially fatal anaphylactic reactions. A, which was incorrect, was hemolysis. While hemolysis can occur, the immediate risk in type B cats receiving type A blood is more severe, often leading to anaphylaxis. Answer C was incorrect for pyrexia. Fever can occur in the transfusion reactions, but is not the most critical concern in this scenario. Answer D was hypotension and also incorrect. This can be a component of anaphylaxis, but is not the primary term used to describe the reaction. And lastly, choice E was incorrect that no blood type matters in cats. Because blood type does matter and is crucial in feline transfusions due to the potential for severe reactions. Great, now it's time for question number three. A three-year-old male border collie presents with acute lameness and joint swelling. Joint fluid analysis shows a high number of neutrophils. 
What type of inflammation is indicated by this finding? Is it A, normal, B, superative, C, granulomatous, D, pyogranulomatous, or E, lymphocytic? Take a moment now to think about your answer and drop it in the chat box below. The correct answer is B, superative. Superative is the presence of a high number of neutrophils that indicate superative or purulent inflammation. Choice A, normal, was incorrect. Normal joint fluid contains primarily small mononuclear cells without neutrophils. Answer C, granulomatous, was also incorrect. Granulomatous inflammation is characterized by mononuclear cells such as lymphocytes, macrophages, and plasma cells. Answer D, pyogranulomatous, was also incorrect. Pyogranulomatous inflammation involves a mix of both neutrophils and mononuclear cells. Choice E, lymphocytic, was also incorrect. Predominantly lymphocytic inflammation is not typical for the described findings. And now it's time for question number four. A seven-year-old female beagle presents with prolonged bleeding from a minor cut. Laboratory tests show normal platelet count, but prolonged bleeding time. Which disorder is most consistent with these findings? Is it A, immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, or IMTP, B, immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, IMHA, C, von Willebrand's disease, D, hemophilia, or E, canine thrombopathia. Take a moment now to think about what answer you'd like to choose and drop it in the chat box below. The correct answer is C, von Willebrand's disease. This disease involves a deficiency in factor VIII related antigen leading to prolonged bleeding time despite a normal platelet count. Choice A, immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, or IMTP, is incorrect because this typically presents with thrombocytopenia or low platelet count. Choice B, immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, or IMHA, was also incorrect. This involves hemolysis of red blood cells and does not primarily affect bleeding time. Choice D, hemophilia, was also incorrect. Hemophilia involves a deficiency in clotting factors, but does not typically present with normal platelet count and prolonged bleeding time. Choice E, canine thrombopathia, was also incorrect. This disorder involves defective platelet function, similar to von Willebrand's disease, but is less common than von Willebrand's disease in the described breed. Great, now let's move on to question number five. A 10 year old male Siamese cat presents with muscle twitching and seizures. Blood work reveals a significantly low ionized calcium level. Which of the following conditions is least likely to cause hypocalcemia in the cat? Is it A, renal disease, B, eclampsia, C, phosphate enema toxicity, D, hypervitaminosis D, or E, ethylene glycol toxicity. Take a moment now to think about what answer you'd like to choose and drop it in the chat box below. The answer here is D hypervitaminosis D, because this condition is the least likely to cause hypocalcemia and typically would cause hypercalcemia. Choice A, or renal disease, was incorrect 
because chronic renal disease can lead to hypocalcemia due to decreased renal conversion of vitamin D to its active form and also hyperphosphatemia. Choice B, eclampsia, was incorrect as often seen in postpartum females, it is common to be a cause of hypocalcemia. Choice C, phosphate enema toxicity was also incorrect as phosphate containing enemas can cause hypocalcemia through precipitation of calcium. And choice E, ethylene glycol toxicity was also incorrect as this toxicity can cause hypocalcemia due to calcium oxalate crystal formation. Well, that's a wrap for tonight's quiz time. You guys did great. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you next week. Keep studying hard.